Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Copenhagen Dreaming. Um, we are in a bit of a situation in that our normal recapper is back, but nobody took notes last time. So we're gonna have you, to we're gonna have to cooperate a little. Yes, we've let ourselves guys, down. Yes, guys, you've let yourselves down. You've let the class down. You've let the whole school down. <laughs> I'm sure that between us we can come up with reasonably accurate s stuff about what happened last time. Yes. Um, I, mean, I know that, they, that everyone... Well, I say everyone. That everyone made, made it to Jutland. Yes. Search of evidence of who it was that destroyed the lady's um, brood, her eggs. Correct. Everybody made it there, and and they found a a, a very badly uh, deteriorated trod, but they were able to squeeze through it, if only barely. Uh, they found mm -hmm. a couple of uh, they found a, a cave where they assumed was you know the lair of of the of the lady. Turns out that it had been once upon a blue moon. Yes. Nowadays, it was the lair of a couple of um, creatures out of Danish myth and lore called Hilhiste or Hell Horses. Three, oh, those things. Three legged horses um, that are the basically the embodiment of, of um, sorrow and pain and so on. And, and um, they, they figured out that Hell Horses can only see them as long as they can see the horses. So, so you know, they they looked away and looked down and 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 you know, basically that way they managed to distract the the creatures while um, while Sonny lured them outside to mm -hmm. give the others some some free reign so that they could work out what the hell was was going on with the eggs yes. and they they used Cronus and found out some disturbing or saw some disturbing scenes of a couple of of uh, very badly blurred uh fey they couldn't make out who they were um who arrived and basically injected the eggs with something nobody could be absolutely sure what it was but clearly it, it destroyed the eggs it killed whatever you know it killed the the hatchlings inside the eggs and um, the only thing they could make out was that it was a man and a woman. Um, once they got back outside, um, once they got back outside, they realized that they could see not only those two, but they could. They had two uh, visions of the past overlapping, where they also. Um, had a a glimpse of um of uh, um, uh, Kindle and the lady having a let's just call it a heated argument it involved fire so heated must be the the correct word i'm sure by dragon standards it was a perfectly civil conversation uh, not really <laughs> oh, okay. they um after that they they headed back to to um to copenhagen they they um reported what they had seen and learned as best they were able yep. and and then they um they basically decided to uh, various people went home you know to to their families and and some of them you know uh, agnes um was <clears throat> trying to have a, a nice and peaceful and, and normal uh, family moment when suddenly there was a ah. linoleum dangling outside her window. Because... This is what happens when you make friends with dragons. Yes, yes. He now thinks that she's just about the coolest thing ever because she's, you know, she she praises him and tells him he's awesome and that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. and she's more fun than, than his boring brothers. Um, yes. I mean, it's not like he, she has anything better to do than sit around and praise him. There you go. And um, at least not as far as he's concerned. Well, uh, exactly. The point is that he is, the, he, no matter how nice he might be, he is a dragon. He is the center of the universe in his own mind. Yes, exactly. Um, and 
Um, Sonny had a serious conversation with Daddy Dearest. And mm -hmm. you know, basically people were having more or less serious conversations. One of them obviously involved Jonas's mom. So I'm not really sure if we should say that that was particularly serious. Or maybe it was serious in her particular way. <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, it all basically, it all ended up with, um, with, uh, uh, Charlie, uh, talking to Caroline and Caroline revealing to him that, you know, basically everyone in the shadow court knew who the man in the vision had been, namely Charlie's granddad. <laughs> and and that basically broke poor Charlie's little heart, and he told her to go away. I mean, which she did. Yes. Plus, of course, the fact that he decided, out of you know the goodness of his heart and love for Caroline, to reveal the fact that you know Den Denmark's Fay now had a queen. Yes, yes. Not, uh, I mean, I mean, it's not like we... I don't, I'm not sure if we explicitly were planning to keep that under wraps. We might have done, but, you know, love conquers all. Especially love common certainly, sense. Love uh, conquers common sense in this case, yes. No question about that. And, um, and we had been told to be discreet about it, because if we weren't, she would be a big-ass bullseye. Yes, yes. I, 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 I see you mention discretion, and I raise you, Charlie, as a knocker. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Um, and slightly traitorous, but you know. Not treacherous. He's, he's just he means in love, right. you know. He's just a young man in love. Yes. But either way, so yes, so he's he's, a, he's not feeling... He's not a happy bunny, to use no, the he's, understatement. No, he has definitely felt better. And yeah. that's pretty much where we uh, ended it last time. Yes. Which... That's a good point. Um... Jasmine never got a chance to go back home and find out how her parents have taken the whole. No, no, because I, I'm, I, I'm a fairy and I have a talking elephant mod, uh, statue. No, thing. because I mean, again, you weren't there, so yeah. No, of course not. Um, but as we rejoin you, all of you, um, let's just say that it is the next morning. Okay. I think that means it's the last day before school begins again for those who need to do that. No. We can't, I mean... I mean, that's true, but at the same time, our obligations might make going to school a bit difficult now. Good luck selling that to your parents. Yep. I mean... That's true. That's fine. As long as they understand that if that if I if I start getting poor attendance, they'll at least understand why that is, because you know it's, it's that, either that yeah. That doesn't mean they're gonna be happy about it because education is important. I mean, yes, but then education is only I can occasionally be secondary to, you know, surviving on the front lines of a war that nobody even knows is being fought. Yeah, try explaining that to your parents and see them lock you in a room for a yeah, they, they 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 won't keep me there. I have abilities beyond their ken. Anyway, um, so yeah, but so we need to, we need to basically prepare for school. Oh. Please, if you want to, you know, I'm just letting you know that the following day is the first day of school after summer holidays, and what a summer holiday it's been. Yeah. So where are we? I assume that seeing as it's the next morning, I assume that you're all at, you know, your respective homes. Ah. I should warn that my Roll20 is telling me that there's a high number of users in your video call chat. Yeah, mine does. If any of the blah 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 do not have sufficient internet blah blah blah, you should do something about it. Yeah, it says the same thing for me. We'll deal with as and when. Um... Well... Yeah, in between you know, getting ready, making sure I've got everything, that Jasmine's got everything ready for school the next day, including contingencies for what will happen if going to school the next day it turns out to be impossible, but, you know, that's just how it goes. Um, 
I think she'll reach out to the others and find out what their what sort of the the, the game plan is, not just for today, but in terms of what the coming days and weeks, especially if some of the people are intending to try and attend school like normal people. <laughs> Ooh, normies. Ew. Oh god, I know. There's but either way, yeah, it's good to sort of you know, have a plan in place for everyone. Yes. Well, Jonas replies that we should probably see how much we can get done today, asking older Faye who, uh, if they know of anyone who are particularly involved with uh, Ivar. Yeah. And then... Older Faye, we can go ask Charlie's granddad. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> What? We only know three Fae that are old enough. Mm -hmm. The Yurg is probably not going to tell us. The old Steel is a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. Then we have Vigo, and then we have his granddad. Yes. So, we'll see. I think Jonas texts Charlie and asks if it would be a good idea to uh, ask his grandfather what he knows. <laughs> Well, let's well, see if, if uh, Emil has made it back uh, yet. I am back. Okay. Uh, uh, just curious, because we don't actually know this. It's only Charlie that does. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, I uh, just saying Jonas can't text. Oh, that's now, true, so, because... He doesn't yeah, know it. He doesn't know that there is a granddad, does he? We've, We've met yeah. him. Oh, yeah, yes. Too, so. That's true, you've yeah, met but, him. But the info... Oh Charlie, yeah, yeah. No, but no, he's, he's going to ask Charlie if it's a good idea if we ask his grandfather what he knows about people who were hanging out with. I... Yeah, because he's old enough. That's I. I if they're not going to ask about this specific information, they're going to be asking about what happened back then in general. Because yeah, yeah, he already said that he was around about that time. Yeah, exactly. He didn't say what he was doing, but that he stopped actually interacting with other Fey after that matter. Yeah. Because the war was so horrible. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, yes, we can... so while we don't know that the woman was a she who got strangled by Steel and that his grandfather was the other man in that image, we do know he's old enough to have been there and he's told us... Yep. So... Charlie, you get a text message. Um, I imagine Charlie is sitting in the workshop, workshop still, looking at all the mayhem that he's caused there. Yeah, he's probably not moved since the night before. <laughs> all right. And I, th I Charlie ignores the the text. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, there's no response to your text in that case, obviously. Oh, well, I, I mean, he might be asleep, enjoying his last uh, summer holiday day. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll probably answer when he gets the chance. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Jonas then suggests to Jasmine and uh, the others that they should meet up and possibly talk to Vigo. Which he also sends to Charlie, of course, but, you know, he'll see it when he sees it. Well, yeah. So, people get this message about going to see Vigo. Anybody responds to it? Uh, this is definitely in because curiosity. Yes. So, you're going to kill the cat? Yes. <laughs> Wow. Yes. I mean, that's a good point. So, yeah, curiously, it's a big thing for a few of us. So, yep, yeah, Jasmine responds in affirmative, saying, "Be there at whatever time." Yeah, let's meet in a couple of hours. That way, people have time to wake up and eat breakfast and hang out with the family. Yeah. Yeah, family time, I just enjoy that so much. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, that that's yeah. just the best thing in the world if you're August, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just lots of fun. Nothing compares to that. Yeah. 
So yeah, we can spend I, a... I would say that is true, but probably not in a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Okay, so everybody has a couple of hours where they can, you know, lounge about, hang out, get some breakfast, and so on and so forth. But eventually, if nobody wants to do anything, or I'm is... gonna go in and talk to my boss and figure out how yep. to do the whole school thing and being a bouncer at the same time. Well, she basically um, lets you know that she's got. Um, uh, f at this point, she's got three nights a week where she wants you to to um, to work. Um, she's not going to start you out on Friday evenings because you don't have any experience just yet. And, you know, it might be a good idea to actually get some experience in this before you get to the busiest evening of the week. Um, so she is going to have you start out on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. Oh, that's fine. They're only open until two or something like that. So you exactly. Like that. Exactly. It's it's not open <clears throat> uh, that long, and she's going to have you on the, not the er, well, not the late shift. Sorry, not you know the the latest one where everybody is is completely hammered. And she says, later on, you are going to have those those shifts as well, no doubt. Um, but we're going to start you out with the early shifts again, just to get you used to the whole thing. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> um. I mean, we could again. It's, it's the morning now, but we could have an opportunity for Jasmine to have breakfast with her yeah, of course. in-laws and see how they're doing. In-laws. Not in-laws, sorry, parents. Why do I say in-laws? Why am I saying in-laws? Why did I think that meant parents? What's wrong with me? Yeah, parents. You're yeah. jumping ahead of yourself with the relationship <laughs> thing here. I think you were jumping ahead of yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. So. Also, in law, Sonio doesn't have a mummy. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yes. Breakfast with her parents. Breakfast with the parental units, yes. Uh, oh, almighty. They, they are a little bit quiet because, you know, um, your, your still dad still hasn't, still hasn't quite gotten, gotten used to the fact that there is a small uh, statue of, a, of a, an elephant god walking around on the kitchen table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't worry, it took me a little while to get used to it as well. But he's very lovely. Well, it's Ganesha, he <laughs> says. It gives Hinduism a rather different flavor. I mean, I, as much as I would like to believe that it's related to that, I don't think um, uh, little Ganesha here is particularly Hindu. He just happens to, you know, be a statue of Ganesha that is you know, that can walk about and think and talk and do all these things. Little Ganesha looks up at you with a with a sort of hurt facial expression. Clearly, you've just ruined his whole shtick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yes, and she just she looks and is like, "I'm not apologizing. Yeah. I love I, I love you dearly, but then, yes, 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 uh, yes." Uh, you. You, you grumble too much. Anyway. <laughs> I have a yeah. face built for it, he says, and looks dejected. Mm-hmm. You're also supposed to be... If you, if, you are, if you are what you want to be, then you're supposed to be sort of forgiving and inclusive. I've been very forgiving and inclusive. Yesterday you have, was but... really good. Hmm. Explained a lot of things. I'm sure it was. Yes... And how much? And she sort of addresses everyone. He says, "How much of it? How much of it sunk in?" Uh, your mom um, scratches her neck and <laughs> chuckles and says, "Ask me again in a week when I've had time to get used to the idea." 
Um, mm. This is really, really weird. Yes. And of course, in a certain... The, the, the caveat is that in a certain amount of time, the the glamour uh, that we put that we were able to put it on you, or, you know, to infuse you with so that you could see all this through Ganesha will eventually fade away and I'll go back to being normal, Ganesha will go back to being inanimate and you'll forget most what? of this. Unless we... You're, it's not permanent? Your father uh, looks a bit saddened by that. I mean, he says... I, I'm I'm not going to sound ungrateful, but but is there a way to prolong it? I mean, I I could, if I, I could keep infusing more glamour into you whenever we get to that sort of time, and that's one way of doing it. it depends on how much whether or not I can uh, acquire enough of it to make that a long term so, uh, solution. Okay. Easy, but... The point is that it's not just it's not just something we can we can put in you. My kind and I live off of this stuff. If I if I run short of it, then well, it's not okay, good. Well, is there something we can do to help you get more of it? <laughs> and your your mom looks up with this this look on her face, looks at your dad, and goes, "You do realize that you make it sound like you're trying to help your daughter get drugs." Well, it sort of kind of works like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I will admit, thinking of, look, looking back on it, this is, this is sounding a bit like that, isn't it? But it's not quite, no. Um, it's not an addiction. I mean, so you like, say... Yes, I mean, again, it's not like it's not like something that I... that I say I need and I don't need. It is like food. If I were to stop taking... If I were to stop, you know taking in glamour at some point that I would eventually just sort of dry up. If and... your mom looks at you again with this whole you're not helping your own argument facial expression. It's really well if you want if you really do want to if if you want to help generate glamour, uh I would need probably need to be involved with quite a bit of it. But it's about being creative and imaginative. It's about Avoiding doing things in a mundane fashion or um, things like that. It's we are we play are partly creatures of of dreams and human imagination. You see, so by doing things in a creative and imaginative way, but you know, working on creating works of art or or great performances or really good cooking, things like that. And it can doing stuff like that and putting your heart and soul into it can really help uh, generate glamour like that. Well, your mom says that should be doable. We tend to put our heart and soul into the food here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Again, I can't. I, I can't even. Even though you now understand why I do hope you, you know, I'm still. Very sorry that I've not been able to help out as much as I want to these last well, few Well, at least weeks. now we know why, your dad says. You know, that it, it all makes more sense now, which is another reason why I'd rather not forget this and go back to being annoyed that you're never here. Yes, but I'm, something else I need to explain is that now that you do know, I need you both to be especially careful what you... What you do, what you say, how you react to things. Because I don't think going out into the world and screaming from the rooftops that our daughter is a fairy is going to, you know, I think we're probably both going to end up in psychiatric treatment if we do that, your mom says. So, <laughs> well, so that's... you know, it, it kind of comes natural to be a, a bit careful about this yes of course and uh, i suppose i should tell you about this but uh, this is going to be a little awkward <sighs> you remember a, f a week or so ago when i was there and there was and you mum you 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 came down a bit ill with something and you had to be had to you yeah. know 
that wasn't just you getting a bit ill. Some people came into the restaurant and there wasn't a table available, but they... They compelled you to believe that there was. You gave them someone else's table and they... They were out for something. It seemed that they knew I was there. They were having some fun at my expense. They did something to you. They... So they were fairies as well? No. Okay. We're not we're not we're not the only kind of creatures from old stories that exist in the world. What you mean like vampires and werewolves and that sort of thing, she says and looks very incredulous. She gets a silent straight faced look back that says, Yeah. Yeah, well yeah. We we do we don't we stay out of each other's way most of the time, but you do get some that like to cause trouble. Right, and so it... basically we had a bunch of angry, or not necessarily angry, but a bunch of, of petulant a werewolves pe turn up and and do things to my mind, is that it? Uh, uh, no, not petulant werewolves, although that's actually more on the mark about actual werewolves and you realize but uh, it was it was it was vampires old and powerful and very bored apex predators i see well that explains well, I, why the I, plates were mostly full when they were when they left yeah we had to ask one of our friends who to come along and see them off peacefully as best we could because there was this most... really this woman with a very strange face who turned up and then they left not long after. Scarred face, staples. You yes. felt uneasy, uneasy looking at her, but not just for the scars. I mean, well, yeah, I was about to say anybody would with a face like that. But even more so, like you, no matter what, you wanted to just get away from her. Yes. Yes, that would have been her. She is one of the petulant werewolves, but she's one of the not so petulant and somewhat reasonable ones. Your your dad has this look on his face of, of disbelief and he looks at your mom and says, If this wasn't going to be trouble for us, I th am almost tempted to say we should put up an, a sign in the door saying supernatural is not welcome. But that wouldn't work because, yeah. Hey, no. No, because then normal people will. Well, they won't they won't you know they won't lock you up but it will advertise the fact that you know more than than any other mortal and that will make you even more more of time uh, oh fantastic i'm really uh, so you wouldn't you, let your own daughter in with that sign but sure you, you understand why i'm apprehensive telling you about this i mean it was uh, part of the reason i was so i didn't want to tell you in the first place is because i thought i could keep i would keep you more safe by keeping you Ignorant, but this obviously isn't possible, so now you might as well know as much as I can say. And to be honest, I'm not yeah. sure. And to be honest, I'm probably going to get a, a, a stern talking to from my... Um, uh, from the one in charge of all of our of the Fae in this city, but I'll deal with that in my so own you, time. So you have a, a boss fairy? More like a queen. Are you telling yeah. me that the royal family are fairies? No, the not not the actual not the not the not the human royal family, the 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 other one that you don't know about. Right. And, and I mean, Ganesha, I mean, Ganesha looks at them and says, I will continue the explanation today. There's a lot more to tell. <laughs> um look, I I do need to head off this morning. Aside from, I've made to make some preparations for starting school again tomorrow. As much as I hope I can do that, um, there's also some other stuff I need to do with my, with everyone in the group uh, to prepare for phase stuff. So I'm, I need to head off today and get some more stuff Thanks. done. Which... We'll be listening to Ganesha, your dad says, with a with with the kind of of tone that says we're going to be listening to the little elephant but you're not off the hook 
That's fine. Um... Yes, remember to give remember to give him a cookie if you have one. He, he he likes that. Yay, cookies! Don't ask me. Don't ask me how a lump of of animate bronze can digest cookie matter. That's that's beyond me. It's a mystery, he says, and and waggles his little bronze eyebrows. Mm hmm. I mean, magic, but then just saying magic seems so reductive. Yes, despite everything, despite. All this new stuff, you're still, you're still my parents, and I still love you more than anything else in the whole world. And I want to keep everything going along relatively safely and smoothly. Your mom looks at you with a dead pan face and saying, "Thanks, thank the gods you didn't say normal." I would, I, I think I would probably throw up if I myself to say that but yes well they let you go mm -hmm. and she goes and people meet up yeah possibly with the yes. exception of Charlie <laughs> Emil there was one. Uh, no, Charlie does not show up. I didn't think he would. <laughs> Gonna find two weeks later when he, no one's seen him and there's a funny smell coming out of the workshop. We're going to go in there, and he's still there in the same sitting position, staring off the space. That was morbid. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm good at that, but. Yeah, so uh, we meet up, I don't know, at Summer Court or something? Or Court, I suppose. Seems reasonable. Well, she hasn't officially collapsed them into one year. That's true. So, it's still the Summer Court. Also, the ring is actually on the Duchess's finger, so you know. Of course. Hmm. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. And you have oh. heard from Charlie? No. Not a peep. Yeah, I tried texting him, but he didn't reply. Maybe that's... he was exhausted. So worrying. We. Mm, I do hope that so. That's all it is. It's probably that, or he's working on something again. You know how he gets when he's working on something. That's true. That is true. Don't assume the worst just because he's not here. No, he can look out for himself. be a bit of a habit, isn't it? It is, but we just have to remind us because not everything is that bad. <laughs> I love. You might be working on a new kind of weapon or something like that. But in this situation, it actually is. <laughs> yeah, but if you actually look at it from the outside, okay, why yeah, assume absolutely. he's broken his absolutely. arms and legs just because he doesn't show up? He could be working on shit like he normally. Definitely. Plus, of course, you know, always defaulting to the worst possible scenario, I imagine would actually be a little bit banal. Yes. So you know, It's also a very, 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 very depressive thing to do. An yeah. anxiety-ridden thing to do. Mm, that explains a few things. But anyway... Um... Yeah, so in that case, since we can't get in contact with him to get in contact with... Um... Vigo. Our secret friend. Uh, maybe we should go talk to Vigo. I think that's our best bet for now. I don't think that you want to talk with us. And I think going to steal would be a very bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just because we survive it once doesn't mean we'll survive it again. That was on their terms. Yes. No, that was on the dragon's terms. True. And I think the added term of no, she were theirs. Yeah. Oh well. Off to Vigo. No, Liz is here. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, he's not. He's not there. He, you have to go and and actually visit him. That's fine. It's always nice to visit him. 
Sunny says, surprisingly awkward around Jasmine for some reason. <laughs> and Jasmine, I suspect, is a little, a little awkward around Sunny, so, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to see if I notice this. Yeah, sure. It's not that hard to see on Sunny. You know him very well. So that would be... Perception empathy, I guess. Yeah, I was about to say perception empathy, definitely, Ash. Yep, I there's think something I really think. wrong with Sunny. Yeah, you definitely notice. Are you two all right? I'm fine. What? Yeah, why, why wouldn't we be? You seem a little awkward. Um. Not more than usual, they huh? say awkwardly. Yeah. Right. I trust you to tell me if it's important. Sure. Yeah. We will. Okay. You're gonna stare at them for a while before moving on. It's nothing that I don't think will affect the the group or anything else. It's fine. Did you two bang? And just now, now Jasmine's turn to turn red. It's like, no! <laughs> Sunny hits up a lot. That wouldn't make me awkward. You know that. That's I mean, he has true. a point. That's true. So, that away, right? And then he stalks off. <laughs> Sorry for the Danish, but oh, not a little point. Yes. Sunny and Jasmine sit in a tree. tree. <laughs> You're all ghastly and I hate you. <laughs> no, you That's don't. Fine. No, I don't. Right. I, I, I lack the capacity for it. So we move on at Sunny's request. Yeah, but then we can still ask Jasmine why she's all red in the face. Oh, yeah. So, you said there was nothing that would affect the group, Jasmine. Are you, th that's kind of confusing that there is something, am I right? There's, um... Mm, something, but it's... it's it, it should be fine. It's just between me and Sunny. Are you sure you didn't...? No. Haven't... It's just, it's oh, just, the problem it, is that there is something between you, and not nothing between you. It's, it's not... Me. Oh, it's... There's not nothing between us. There's not exactly something between us, but I mentioned to Sunny that I would like there to be something between us. And as you can see, she's sort of shrinking on herself as she says it. Oh, that makes sense. Mm. Well, we've not really had a chance to talk about it since then, and I think Sonny needs time to sort of think about what he wants. Well, it's good of you to give him that time, then. Mm. As long as it doesn't keep me waiting too long, I shall get cranky. Oh, we wouldn't want that. <laughs> right. Okay. Fair enough. It's it's. I hope it won't affect group dynamic too much. It shouldn't. Do. It turns out that there is something there. He winks. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it won't. We'll do our best to make sure it doesn't. All right. Let's uh, let's get going. At then. least Jasmine promised that part. <laughs> Sonny's walking up a hit somewhere. And you're going to listen you're going to listen to it too, dear, or else I shall be very cross with you. Well, he's not actually in that conversation. No. But I I like the idea that she's already assumed that she can make um decisions on his behalf and he's gonna be hit like a hen packed husband. <laughs> because that always works. Mm. Well Anyway. We move. So you head off to visit Vigo? Yes. Yes. Well, he's at home. Yes. 
he is at home, and there's a smell of freshly baked bread in the in the house when you get there. Oh. I suppose it's polite to knock. Yeah, he comes out and opens the door and smiles and, Welcome! Come in! Thank you. I hope you don't mind us just stopping by. No, no, no! It's nice to have visitors. I just finished baking. Yeah, it smells delicious. Well, in that case, you can tell me if it is delicious. Come in and have a seat. <laughs> Don't mind if I do, or we do. Jonas goes in at least. Yes, probably take a seat as well. I guess. He, yes. He brings um, freshly baked um, French loaf with homemade um, uh, jam. Oh. Um, nom 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 nom. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the om nom noms. So much. Is no, down nice. from the table. Yeah. Sir looks dejected, hops down, and he's like, "But I wanted to." And Vigo gives him a slice of of toast with with um with jam, and Sir's tail just goes into overdrive. Not that you're not allowed to get it. It's just you know. You use those feet on the ground outside. That's not nice on the table. He he thinks long and hard about that and tries to come up with a retort and fails. <laughs> Pets his head. So, um, I'm afraid we've come with more questions. Oh, well... I suppose it's necessary, everything considered. He says and sits down. We've been uh, doing some investigation. Right. And we wanted to know if uh, Baron Coase had any... I hesitate to say henchmen, but people he normally had do stuff or trusted with very important tasks well obviously he he worked with he he worked with she he he didn't particularly like anyone else oh makes sense not the not liking people but him being an asshole makes sense yeah kind of what about the duke well the duke pretty quickly tried you know once he had won you know his his battles he tried to very quickly to extend an olive branch to the rest of us and 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 sort of all right the war is over i won i'm now in charge let's all coexist sort of thing right i know for a fact that Coase wasn't particularly happy about that, but, you know, as you said... Yeah, how is he going to have a society with she alone? I mean, come on. I don't think he wanted a society with she alone. He just wanted the she to be, you know, on top, indisputably on top, and everyone else being reduced to little better than serfs. Mm. <laughs> So he didn't have any people he trusted most of all. Well, as far as you know. he he did have a couple um, of men and women that worked with him. To be honest with you, I mean it's been so long. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, pretty sure if I saw pictures of them, I might recognize them, but they were never really in the forefront it was always him and it was always that damn dragon of his mm, what about in the time after the war yeah that's i think you know he 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 worked still he still worked with these people after the war until eventually he went away but yeah he never, <clears throat> he 
he never got along with the idea that um he never got along with the idea that the she shouldn't simply be able to command anyone else to do whatever they wanted. Of course. Were there anyone back then that were pretty good with poisons? Yeah, a couple of people, I guess. I mean, we had we had some people dabbling in alchemy and the sort of thing. You know, it's pretty not... I mean, it's not an unusual thing for, for Fae to, to work with. It's kind of fun to see if you can turn base metal into gold. Is that actually a thing? People try. They've, nobody's ever succeeded, but it doesn't make them stop trying. Careful, Harry Potter. They're coming to take your Philosopher's Stone. Hmm. Yeah, we're specifically looking for a man and a woman. A man and a woman? Well, that's, that's as he says and looks a little apologetic, that's that's obviously not much to go on. No. Um, and we don't have any pictures, do we? Uh, he looks at uh, August. Actually, you took a... no, not as such. You took a boatload of pictures, but none of them with those in them were were in focus. No, but we can actually show him some of the silhouettes. Sure, that might trigger something. So I'll just show him some of what we've actually taken. Yeah, he takes a look at it and says, "Well." That one on the left, he says and points, that that looks like it's tall and slender and so on. Could be a she, for all I know. In the other? It's not exactly tall and slender, is it? It's more somewhat shorter and a little... I, I don't know. It doesn't look like a she to me. Looks a bit more stocky, doesn't it? A, a little? It's still kind of spindly, but it's just... You know, yeah, but everything beside a she is stocky. Well, compared to a she, yes. Hmm. Well, at least the blurry part isn't blue, so it's not a troll. No, it's too small to be a troll as well, he says. I mean, they're, they're huge. I don't know, Sara isn't that big. True, but she's still kind of solid. Of course. Maybe the memories were so old that it was hard to see. Yeah, or yeah. someone has done something to obfuscate their, their presence. Yeah. Is there a way to undo it? Uh... Not that I know of, he says. Uh, I don't know, maybe a knocker could have come up with something like that? I, I I don't know. Yeah, but Charlie isn't answering his phone. Oh, that's why he's not here. Oh? Yeah. Yeah. We should go check on him, just in case. Yeah. i tell him, yeah, he's probably just working on something. I mean, these are dangerous times, Vigo says. Can't be too careful. No, but it's the first day we've gotten home in quite a while. He's probably just tired of working on something, as Sonny says. True. But yeah, we should probably go by and say hi. Hmm. At least see if he's remembered to eat. <laughs> yeah. Gotten out of bed. Well, I don't think we have any more questions. Um, sorry to be so vague. No, oh, no, if you don't have any more information than that to ask from, then how can you be anything but vague? Yeah. I 
mean, there were no. people who got lost back then. That's the thing. There were it was such a horrible time. You know, people died in the war, and others vanished, and you know, probably because they got killed but never got found, and it was just it was a mess. Do you recall a period of fourteen days where the black lady just stayed around? Back then, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hard to forget, you know, having something like that sticking around. Did someone go absent for an extended period of time during those days? Oh, to be honest, I, I can't... I, I really don't remember. I think... I mean, people come and go, you don't see people at court for a few days. Mm. You know, maybe a week even, you know, some people almost never turn up at court. I'm, I'm, I mean. Yeah. yeah, just in case someone who was usually there. Oh, oh, so like that. No, not that, that I can think of, he says. How about someone who never returned, which was super strange? Like, people went lost, as you said, and people disappeared. But what about someone who used to be in good cahoots with people and then never returned? That happened as well, but again, it, it happened. I mean, you have to remember, he says, back then, there were almost twice as many Fae in Copenhagen as there are now. There were? That's almost, a lot of Fae. Almost twice as many, and all of them, well, until the war began, of course, um, all of them were, were commoners. There were, you know, maybe half a time as many commoners as there are today, all in all. And then we suddenly had the gates to Arcadia open and out comes these 50 or more sheep clad in armor and wielding weapons saying, we are in charge now, riding dragons and who knows what else. And, and it got really ugly. I mean, we aren't talking battles here with 10,000 people on either side during this war, obviously, but there were thousands of chimera involved on you know all in all it was people vanished people just went missing we stopped wondering after a while i mean uh, i probably lost 20 friends i don't even know how i didn't come to banality because of it he says and looks sad uh, yeah, I'm I'm sorry we have to rip up such old memories. Oh, 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 oh. old wounds. He shakes his head and 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 you know, waves a hand dismissively and says, "No, no. You're doing this for all the right reasons. I'm mean, it's just it hurts, obviously, but I'm just... I, I want to help if I can. Of course. Um, I mean, we'll definitely come back if we remember something else to ask you. Sure. Or if well, you could help in any other way, of course. Of course. Was the bread any good? Oh, oh yeah. That, that cheers him up. No, that's what we have Well, at some point we should go check on Charlie. Yeah. Not to, you know, come by, eat, and then dash out, but... Oh, no, it's, it's fine. Stay for a cup of tea and then head off and talk to him. Yeah, yeah of course. He pours everyone who wants a cup of tea. Tea. Hmm. Jonas enjoys some tea. Yeah, and eventually, of course, you get done with that, and then you wanted to head off. Yes. Uh, yeah, and while we're drinking tea, Agnes is just telling a little bit about the adventures in Ireland, just to sort of. Uh, lighten the mood was a good story. He is super into that. 
You know, he oh, yeah. really is into that, and you know, he has questions, and he's he's all kinds of keen on the. Especially, he thinks it's really cool that you stayed with a werewolf. He can't imagine what that would result in in Denmark. Yeah. Well, first off, uh, Francesca's cooking is almost as good as yours. Cool. She has the sweetest little baby, too. That is, you know, good cooking and a nice family. You know, he, he smiles. He gets this really contented look on his face. And he's like, is there hmm. anything better? Well, she was super pretty, and her husband couldn't sing. <laughs> was he Irish? Well, he could, but he was very Irish, and didn't have a tone in his life that was clean. At least he tried. That, that he says, is... I mean, that, that kind of goes against all the stereotypes, doesn't it? What do you mean? That all the Irish are supposed to be musical. That is, that, is, that is true, actually, yes. Well, maybe he was very musical, but singing was not one of his strong points. That's true. <clears throat> Could be a great composer, for all we know. Yeah. But he made a great breakfast. He uh, he sits there and, and looks for a moment as if, you know, now he gets ideas for making breakfast. Um. Yeah. And the king was... Out of this world, quite literally, yeah, well, and out of our world. Well, the she tend to be kind of pretty, don't they? He grins. They do. But even for she, wow. He was a. Uh, he was good looking, was he? Yeah, oh, yeah. and the sailor we saw first, Aura, who. Basically, you're telling me that the um, that the Irish got all the pretty people. Not all of them. Nah, we got Sunny. <laughs> he almost chokes on his tea. <laughs> well, and we got you. He says, and August, and Agnes. You're all kind of pretty. He says. Mm, thank you. Thank you. But you know, I try to to retain an air of humility. So he just gives you a look. <laughs> Sony also just gives him a look. Emphasis grins widely. Emphasis on try, I think. Emphasis on kind of failed. <laughs> yeah, that was the joke. But hey, you had tons of fun over there, did elbows, jo <laughs> Jonas. Hey, I sorry, called. We both disappeared for the night. Yeah, but you were the last one I suspected to do that. Hmm. What? You've met my mom? I have. Why would a strapping young man like Jonas not go out and have sex if he gets the chance? Vigo says. Because he usually argues with his mother about it all the time. Yeah, but that's because it's his mother. You don't talk about sex with your parents normally. You no. don't? No, not so normally. Looks confused. No, you, you really don't. Huh. See. Then I have abnormal dad. I mean, I probably also have an abnormal mom, but it's pretty great. It is. From mm -hmm. what little I've heard of your mom, he, he says, yes, you, you have a very... Unusual mother. Oh, I should bring her here sometime. She'd love that. She would. <laughs> well, she'd be welcome. Oh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. You should introduce her to some of the satyrs in the court. She would love that. Jonas gets a very annoyed expression as he says, yes, she would. And I would hear then, all about it. Then what about some of the she? Hmm. Oh, come on. You've shown her the world. You can't keep her away from them now. I don't even know if it's 
normal to to uh, bring people who are not fey to court. Not really. Maybe it's, not it's, it's to kind of... court, but yeah, I could have some friends come by. That reminds me. Last I heard of Dad, he wanted to call your mom. Okay. Well, I mentioned you had her uh, poof too. Well, it wasn't my doing. No, but I mentioned she was poofed. And then he got interested. Which is why I wrote you the text about, you know, support group. Oh, right, you did that. I, I think I warned her. Hmm. Warned her? Yeah. My dad isn't that much of a stickler. No, you know, it's nice to have a heads up. This is true. Why is it our parents have contact info on each other again? Because they're worried parents with teenage kids, I guess. Because we're such good friends, Sunny, that's why. Uh-huh. Oh, well. Anyways, you guys wanted to head off? Yeah. Right, so you're heading to where exactly? Charlie's home, or...? I don't remember. Is the workshop near his home? It's a little bit away from it, actually. Wouldn't it be a perfect time to take a break, though? Yes, actually it would. It would be a perfect uh, time to take a break before we head off to find, hopefully find Charlie. And so we shall be right back. <laughs>